Hello there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm going to show you how to enlarge images in Photoshop without losing quality and I'm going to show you the best ways to work with images and graphics to keep them crisp and beautiful. If you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel and visit prettywebs.com for more design resources for your blog and business. Now let's get started. Okay, so this is the image that we're going to be working with today. You can see that it's 640 pixels by 728 pixels and the resolution is 72 pixels per inch. We're going to be enlarging this four times of the size that it is right now, but I'm going to show you a few different methods to do that. So what I'm going to do right now is just go ahead and duplicate this layer. So if I come over to the layers, I have the layer selected, right click, duplicate layer. And I'm going to name them one, two, and three. The destination is going to be a new document and I'm also going to name that number one. Unlock that, right click, and I'm just going to keep doing this. Okay, you can see up here I have now number one, two, and three, and I have the original here. I'm going to go ahead and close the original. I don't want to save it. And you can see down here that they are all 640 by 728. Everything is exactly the same. So we're going to go ahead and start enlarging the images. What I'm going to do first is come to Window Arrange because I want to look at all of them together. So I'm going to use this 3 up vertical and that's just going to allow me to see all of the images together. I have this first document selected and I'm going to zoom into it. I just want to zoom into the eye area here. Okay, and once I have it more or less where I want it to be, I'm going to come up to window again, arrange, and then just make sure to match them all. So I'm looking at the same thing in each one of the documents. Start resizing the images. I'm going to come here to image number one. You can see this is 640 by 728. And we're going to come to image, canvas size. And we're going to switch this to percent. If you don't have it at percent, make sure that it's in percent. Bump it to 400% width and 400% height. We'll leave the resolution at 72 and you need to make sure that resample is selected. In the resample drop down menu yours will probably be at automatic. We're going to use preserve detail 2.0. This is the latest one that Adobe's come out with. So if you have the latest version of Photoshop CC you should have this in there. You'll see this reduce noise slider here. Now usually what I do, let me lower this so I can see the full eye area. So usually what I'll do is I will look at it with no noise reduction in the preview here. And then I'll look at it with 100% noise reduction. So this is too smooth and it's probably going to look unrealistic. So we'll come closer to the middle and see what that looks like. Maybe. A little bit lower so we're gonna leave it here at 15% I'm gonna click OK and we've got our first image resized now we're gonna come to image number two we're gonna do the same thing image image size we're gonna bump it to 400% now everything is gonna be the same except the way that we resample so this second one we're gonna use Preserve Details Enlargement. This is what we had before we had this newer version of it, the 2.0. So we're going to use that. And I'm going to leave the noise, uh, reduce noise exactly the same just so that we don't have any changes between images. I'm going to click OK. And that's our second image. Now we have image number three. We're going to come up to image, image size just as we did before. Same thing, 400 width. 400% make sure that that's, this is on percent 400 height and we're going to resample with bicubic smoother so we'll click OK and now we have all three images enlarged I'm going to click on this first one you can see it is now 2560 by 2900 pixels I'm going to zoom out so we can see where we're at Okay, so I'm going to set it up right around there. I'm going to come back to Window, Arrange, and Match All, just so that we have everything exactly the same so we can compare them a little bit better. So these two are the newer versions. This is Preserve Detail 2.0. 
This is slightly older version, just preserved detail. And this one right here is enlarging using bicubic smoother. So this is the oldest of the three versions. So you can see the difference just by looking at these three. Here and here, not so much. You're not seeing much of a difference. But if you look closely at the eyelashes here and maybe this area right here, you can definitely see the difference in these two. And this one right here, uh, there's a very clear difference between this one and this one. So you can see even right here, the little whites of her eyes are definitely more pronounced in this one and even more so in this one. So this one is going to give you the lowest resolution and then a little bit better and then this is the best. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of number two. I'm not going to save that. I'm going to compare the newest version here, that's 2.0, with Bicubic Smoother, which is the oldest version. And this one, just like the other, this is 2560 by 2912. This one is also... 29, 2560 by 2912, so they're exactly the same. Now here I just want to give you a couple of ways to sharpen this to get something that's more like this. You can use this with graphics and other elements in your design as well. It's not just for images, so if you have a small graphic that you want to use and you want to make bigger, you can enlarge it and then also add filters like this as well just to achieve a crisp, sharp graphic. So I'm going to select this document right here and I'm going to go into the filters and I'm coming down to sharpen and the first one we're going to look at is shake reduction. Now keep in mind these are very labor intensive on your computer so make sure your computer can handle this otherwise it's going to crash. The other thing I suggest is that you're patient with this because it does take some time. We're going to move this eye over. I'm going to put it at 0.5 so I can see the entire eye there. Okay so I went ahead and changed some of the settings here just to get exactly what I wanted. Uh, I did want to show you one last thing. We have this advanced area right here. Usually I'll use this if there's two subjects in an image. So right here we have one focus and it's and her face is almost the entire image so we don't really need to use this for this image but if she if her face was a smaller portion of a larger image and we wanted to focus on that then we would use that here or if we had two focus areas that we wanted to use for these settings then we would use that as well so I'm gonna just close that up I just wanted to show you that okay I'm gonna click OK and you can see that the image that we have here is not exactly what you'd have here. You'd still have to come in. You have this smart filter right here so you can actually click on this and use this as a mask. If I use my brush tool and bring that up, I can kind of clear up some of this noise that we have in this area as well to get something a little bit closer to what we have here. But you can see that the eye area, the detail has definitely improved in this image. So that's before and this is after. And let's go ahead and look at other areas of this image. So if you hit the shift key and the space bar and remove this, you can move both images together just so that we're looking at the exact same thing in both images. I'm gonna take a look at her lips. We do have a little more detail in, in the lips on this side, but it really does look pretty good on this side considering that this side is a much more advanced way of sampling. So I'm gonna zoom out just a touch just so we can see the entire image this is normally how somebody's going to be looking at this image and remember both of these images were enlarged 400 percent so given that consideration i think these images look amazing even though i would have to give the finer detail to the newer method preserve details 2.0 you can still get a similar result using an older method like Bicubic Smoother just by using these filters and you can even come in here um, now that we have this make sure that you have a smart object though if you if you add this filter without turning this into a smart object first you're not going to have this mask here so just make sure that you turned it into a smart object and then you applied the filter in order to get this mask and then you can come over here and just double click and then you can just kind of work with the modes here 
uh, soft light overlay luminosity uh, just to get something that will look even better. So you can have a lot of control even in an older version of Photoshop as well. Okay, so I went ahead and removed the shake reduction filter. I want to show you another way to sharpen this image. So we're going to go back into it. We have this layer selected right here. We're in number one, which was our bicubic smoother. And we're going to go up to filter. We're going to go to sharpen. And then this time we're going to use the unsharp mask. And we're going to change some settings in here. Um, just as before, I like to take it all the way up and then bring it, we'll leave it there about 120. We'll change our radius. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so that's a little too much. Okay, we'll leave this right around 10 and then we'll change our threshold to get rid of some of that noise. And you can work with this a little bit more just to get the exact detail that you're looking for. But for me, um, this is what it looked like before. This is the after. I'm happy with that. I'm going to click OK. Okay, for this one, if you notice here, I didn't turn this into a smart object. That means that the changes that I made here are permanent. So I can't go back to my to the mask that, that was created automatically when we did the first filter. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Make sure that you convert your image to a smart object before you start doing any of this work. Otherwise, you'll have something that looks like this. And it's not a big deal. Um, if you forget, you can just always go back to what it was before. Right click, convert to smart object, and then start all over again. But if you've moved past this and you're working on something else and then you realize that you did this, it's going to be a problem for you. Keep it in the back of your mind, convert it into a smart object, and then work from there. So we can come back in and I'm just going to use that last settings. Click OK. And now we have our smart filter. So if we want to unmask any portion of this, we can definitely do that. And we can also come in here, double click and change the, the layer modes for this as well. So I'm going to cancel this. OK, one more thing I want to show you quickly. Control V on the keyboard and we're going to resize this image. We're going to make it about that size and then you're definitely going to make a bigger file for yourself. So while you're working, make sure to convert them to smart objects. So right now this image is in a smart object and I resized it. Now the problem here is that this is a permanent change. I cannot go back from this. Uh, if I try to make it big again, you can see that that's just not going to work. This doesn't just happen when you scale your images, like you make them smaller and try to blow them back up again. It's also happening when you turn and move your images as well. And not just with photographs, but also with graphics, any type of graphic that you have and that you're working with, and maybe you're just moving it around on the canvas. Uh, when you start doing things like this, even if you're not resizing anything, you're still affecting the quality of the image. Every time you move it, anything that's on that layer is being reduced unless you're using smart objects. So I'm going to turn this one on, right click and convert it to smart object and you'll see the difference. So I can bring it way down, bring it way up and the quality of this image is never going to change. To learn more about working inside of Photoshop, check out one of the videos up on the screen right now. And don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.